would like to introduce Cole Hammer to the interview room here at the 2022 Travelers Championship. Uh, Cole, you're playing on a sponsor exemption this week. The tournament has a, a great tradition of uh, offering sponsor exemptions to um, young up-and-coming players like yourself. Um, just give us some uh, comments on how you found out about that sponsor exemption and what you're looking forward to this week. Well, I remember... <laughs> I, I've been watching the PGA Tour on TV for a long time. I mean, it's been my dream to one day compete out here. And um, this is one of the earliest tournaments that I remember watching. Uh, I remember thinking, man, that golf course looks absolutely perfect. And the atmosphere is, I mean, somehow there's always dramatic finish here. And, uh, you know, they've, uh, this tournament's been known to give uh, exemptions to younger players starting out on their careers. And um, I'm very fortunate to to be given one as I'm embarking on mine. So uh, it's a really special opportunity. And uh, you made your professional debut um, last week on the Corn Ferry Tour at the Wichita Open. Um, just some thoughts on how, I know you missed the cut, sadly, but um, just some thoughts on how that went as your first start as a professional. It was a fun week down in Wichita. I mean, I, I learned a lot about myself and how I need to prepare for tournaments. I mean, I've been in college for four years and basically been told how to prepare every week and now that I'm on my own I need to uh well last week was a good way for me to figure out what works for me and what doesn't and uh it's great to, f to finally compete as a pro it's what I, like I said what I dreamed about for a long time and um you know at the end of the day it's just golf and uh I'm gonna have fun with it I, I did notice that you started with a double bogey but bounced back with two birdies the first three holes that you played um how was that opening tee shot did you have any nerves was it a different feeling at all uh, I was definitely nervous. I mean, I always get a little nervous. Uh, yeah, it was an unfortunate double bogey start, but I think it uh, made me just mad enough to go ahead and birdie the next two, and uh, then I settled down after that. So um, I'm glad I got that start under my belt before coming here. I mean, I feel like I've, uh, you know, gotten myself into a pressure situation now, so I'm excited to use that experience. Okay, if we have any questions from anybody, just raise your hand, and we'll get a microphone to you. Uh, in the meantime, I'll just say that you finished up uh, at, at the University of Texas with the NCAAs and um, a really good performance at, uh, recently before turning pro. Just what, what was it like leaving college with you know your friends going different ways and, and starting a, basically a new career? Well, it was an incredible way to go out, we'll yeah. put it that way, and uh, really put a bow on the four years. And, uh, man, I couldn't have had any more fun than I did in Austin. What a great place and a great team and a great school. And um, it's weird now that all my friends are – you know, some are working, and uh, my, some of my teammates are playing professionally, and it's just a, it's a whole new world now. Uh, and um, but you know, I I think I'll I'll stay close with everybody, and um, I'm just so proud to have gotten a degree from the University of Texas. It was something I always wanted to do, and uh, you know, growing up in Houston, it was a pretty easy decision for me to go to Texas, and and uh, now that I'm on the other side of it, it's cool to be a Texas X. Great. We'll uh, take a question from David over here on the left. Yeah, Cole, there's a cliche that's in sports that you don't want to change things that have given you success in the past, that got you to where you are. But what would you anticipate in the next couple of years you're going to need to do or to improve your game as it stands today so that you can contend on a, on a regular basis at this level? Yeah, I mean, uh, I really believe in myself and my game as it is right now. Uh, I feel like I developed a lot in college. Um, you know, physically, uh, I've got a lot bigger since I was in high school, and obviously, it's still not a, a big person by any means. But um, I don't feel like uh, I'm I'm lacking per se in any any part of the game. I mean, could always find a few more fairways, and uh, I think that is going to be crucial. I mean, you look at stats and uh, driving the ball long and straight is uh, one of the most important ones. So. You know, that's always something I'm looking to improve on. Um, but, you know, I'm, I feel like I can use my other strengths as well, uh, even if I do, you know, miss a few fairways. So um, there's always things to improve on. That's the great thing about golf. Uh, and, you know, we'll just take it as it comes, I guess. Um, you, uh, I think you've got a number of starts on the Corn Ferry Tour through the PGA Tour University um, Velocity Global Ranking. I think you finished fifth on that, so you've got the summer to play on the Corn Ferry Tour. Can you just talk to the importance of that program and you know paying attention to the rankings while it was happening and how important that was for you to perform towards the end? I mean, I wish I could put into words how important that program is for us. I mean, 
Uh, obviously, it wasn't a thing until two years ago. Um, but to be a part of like the second graduating class, if you will, is uh, it's really cool. And it's it's a nerve wracking coming down the stretch. It's, it it had a you know I haven't been in Q school before, but it felt like it a little bit considering I was you know jockeying with a few other guys uh, on, at at NCAA's and. Uh, you know, luckily snuck into the top five and, and have those Corn Ferry starts. And, I mean, as we all know, it's, it's just so hard to get out on tour and, and to have a place to play coming, directly coming out of college is, is so nice. And um, the tours, you know, I, th I think this program is going to uh, keep flourishing over the next few years and um, giving the top college players a place to play right away is, uh, is incredible. Um, I'm going to say that this is, is not your first PGA Tour start. I think this is your eighth. You've had, a, had some experience playing as an amateur. We all know that. I think you were the third youngest um, at 15 to play in the U.S. Open at Chambers Bay. And I think you played in, what, three or three, three, US, three Opens. U.S. Opens? What, what, have, what have you learned from playing in those major championships from 15 to, to recently? Each one's been totally different. Um, when I was 15, I... <laughs> I mean, I was a kid. I didn't know what I was doing. It was like a circus. I mean, uh, walking out on the range with guys like I mean, Tiger played and Rory, and I was a complete awe. Uh, there was a few fairways I couldn't reach. And so, I mean, it was just all about the experience. I mean, uh, you know, when I was 15, I was like, you know what, I, I could win this thing. But you know, I think I quickly realized that, or now I do realize that I didn't have a, a, a fighting chance. But anyways, moving on from Chambers Bay, going to Wingfoot, uh, was another good experience. Uh, it was, it was COVID at that time, so uh, there were no spectators out there, so it felt a little different. Didn't quite feel as if like a normal major, um, but I learned a lot playing with uh, Alex Norton and uh, Matthias Schwab, uh, and you know they were great. And I just feel like I learned that you know it's impossible to play perfect golf. And sometimes a bogey is a good score, and uh, letting myself, uh, you know, really make a couple of mistakes and, and still bounce back from that was something that I learned because I didn't let myself do that that week. And then Torrey Pines this past year um, just realized that, you know, I can be aggressive at certain times versus, mm -hmm. um, you know, always being conservative. Great. We'll come back to David. For yeah, but just, just one more. Victor Hovland was uh, also a sponsor's exemption to this tournament a few years ago, and he played a number of practice rounds and really leaned on. He told me several of the guys at Oklahoma State before he came out. How much have you spoken to or talked with, practiced with some of the guys from the University of Texas before you're, you're coming out here? I mean, I've I played practice round with Scotty at uh, Torrey Pines last year and Royal St. George's. Uh, and he was a senior uh, when I was a senior in high school. So uh, I got to come, and he was like our host for – my official visit uh, and so I've spent quite a bit of time around Scotty and he's been a great guy to talk to um, very involved in uh, college golf fellowship and his re relationship with Christ and that's something that is really important to me and so I've been able to talk to him about that and just what it's like to be on the PGA Tour and uh, you know on the day-to-day -day basis and then uh, you got guys like like Jordan Spieth who obviously is a, a legend from Texas and uh, I mean, he was really the first Longhorn alumni that I talked to at Chambers Bay. I mean, took me under his wing when I was 15, and I still talk to him to this day. So he's been awesome. And then Dylan Fratelli, Bo Hostler, um, and then there's other guys that I'm forgetting, but they're always out at UT Golf Club uh, practicing with us. And so it's, it's great to have Longhorns around, and it's like family. Um, and just finally, before we let you go, Cole, um, you mentioned that you'd watched this tournament on TV growing up. and. Now you're finally here. I think this is your first trip to the site. What, what was your first impression when you saw the setup and the range, which looks pretty impressive? <laughs> the range is unbelievable. It might be the best range I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the golf course is different than I thought it was or thought it would be on TV. I don't think TV does the undulations justice. Uh, I mean, I got on the first tee box and I couldn't believe how downhill it was, and then the second hole straight back up the hill. And uh, you know, sometimes unfortunately TV doesn't show that just because of where the cameras are. But um, golf course is in perfect shape, and, and that back nine is such a fun finish, 15 through 18, or well, really 13 through 18. There's just so much that can happen, and um, no wonder there's so many fireworks every year. Pretty happy with your form. What uh, what should we look for uh, when we watch you play this week? Hopefully we can look for a lot of birdies. <laughs> Sounds good. But, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, yeah, look, 
We should be a good time. All right. Well, we appreciate your time and uh, good luck this week. Thank you very much. Thanks, Cole.